Has this ever happened to you? You're innocently scrolling the internet, slowly making your thumbprint unrecognizable when something slides across your eyeballs that immediately makes your blood hot enough to cook pasta al dente. It's some stupid person doing some stupid thing, and in that moment it is your righteous, God-given duty to let them know just how stupid they are. But before they reel you in enough to suckle the delectable engagement from your fingertips when you share their video with your friends in disbelief or get in a heated ideological debate in the comment section with Big Hog underscore 69, if you stop for a second and pull that hook out of your gills, you might just realize that you've been rage baited. Rage bait has existed since Og first pretended to throw Ugg's favorite club into the fire they just invented. Trolling just kind of seems to be a part of human nature. With the birth of the internet, rage baiting became a non-contact sport, putting a wall of anonymity between trolls and their victims. Back in my day, I just felt a hair turn gray, back in my day, rage bait had to be at least somewhat believable most of the time, but lately I've watched TikToks that are about as compelling as a middle school Christmas pageant go massively viral. Not only are there more creators chumming people's feeds with obvious rage bait than ever before, they're somehow getting away with it. You really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? Apparently, the media literacy of the average internet user has been reduced to that of someone who still finds peekaboo entertaining. So I'm going to guide you innocent lambs through a few of these videos and explain to you why they're so obviously fake. My husband and I have removed the bottoms of all of our shoes. We decided to start walking barefoot and one of our followers had a great idea. Since some businesses don't want us being completely barefoot, but if we cut off the bottom of our shoes, it allow us to be barefoot but blend in with everyone else. There were multiple requests for me to react to this TikTok, and I will admit, for the first few seconds, I did think that I was bearing witness to peak levels of saltine silliness, but let's keep watching. Our shoe collection is worth more than $20,000, but this is a sacrifice we're willing to take because walking barefoot means the world to us. Okay, well, there's our first ridiculous lie. I could find most of their collection in the back of a Payless right next to mine. So today we got to work and started removing the bottoms. We weren't sure if this was going to be easy or hard and it ended up being pretty easy. We made a little lip on the bottom of the shoe where our toenails will go so they can latch on so we'll actually be able to hold onto the shoe while trying to walk without the bottom. Y'all, come on. A shelf for their toenails to latch onto? If, if you're outside and someone tells you gullible is written on the ceiling, do you look up? And we did the same thing for our heels. The experience of cutting off the bottoms of our shoes was very freeing and detoxifying, just like walking barefoot is. Did you catch that? No? Let's watch it again. And we did the same thing for our heels. Cutting off the bottoms of our shoes. Uh-oh, buddy. It looks like you forgot to turn the tool on and are just rubbing it against the bottom of the shoe. Almost like... Almost like you're lying to me or something. Oh, and what a kowinky dink. You're wearing those ugly purple shoes you cut up in the beginning. Guess you didn't feel like wearing the Nikes, huh? I needed to grab a few things for a trip we're going on. The experience was absolutely perfect. The workers came up to us, they talked to us, they even complimented our shoes. I doubt any workers actually came up to you because I, I don't think the Sephora employee handbook sufficiently prepares them to deal with whatever this is. Also, notice how we never see the bottom of her shoes because she didn't cut them off! I definitely recommend this if you're trying to go incognito barefoot. It's the perfect way to get all the benefits of going barefoot, but also have no one know. All right, okay, you can uh, put those white claw clenchers away, sir. I think we're done here. Now, if I could just direct your attention to this screenshot taken from the Christy Fritz TikTok page, you see that, you see that little 60.1 number with a capital M next to it? That's over 60 million views. Now, TikTok's creativity program pays very inconsistently, but we can assume a rate of around 50 cents per 1,000 views. That means for the low, low price of their dignity and one pair of shoes, this couple made about $30,000 off of outraged viewers like you. But before we continue, I'd like to take a second to talk about today's sponsor, Care Of. Over the past few years, I've really put my personal health on the back burner, so one of my goals for 2024 was to start taking better care of 
ha, myself. I've been eating more fruits and veggies, going on walks, and even started to learn how to box, but I still really struggle with making sure that I have all the vitamins I need, which is where Care Of helps. They offer a curated set of products with research-backed ingredients and optimal doses. It's really easy to get started. You just take their online quiz, and based on your answers, they personalize a combination just for you. It comes separated into daily packs from this dispenser, which I really like because I'm super forgetful and I always lose track of which vitamins I've already taken for the day. Based on my health goals, my daily routine includes two multivitamins to cover any nutrient gaps that I may have during the day and rhodiola for stress and focus. These daily packs are so convenient for travel because they can easily fit into a purse, backpack, or suitcase. And I love that each one of them has a fun fact or a joke or a quote written on it. You can try Care Up for yourself by clicking the link in my description or scanning the QR code. Make sure to use my code FUNKYFROG50 to get 50% off subscription items in your first order. Now it is hard to believe that anyone could fall for the shenanigans of these shoe cutting shysters, but the comment section indicates otherwise. I get being barefoot in nature, but in the city? What, what about needles or, or other things on the ground in public? Good luck on a hot day. This isn't the first time this couple has made serious money pretending to do something outrageously stupid and baiting thousands of people to leave angry comments. Come with us to get our four-year-old a Tesla. I know you're probably thinking, why are we getting a four-year-old a Tesla? But we actually have a very valid reason. Time goes by really quick. She's four now, but she's going to be 16 before we know it so we want to get her the car now keep it in storage until she's old enough to drive now which do you think is more likely that this couple actually bought their four-year-old a tesla or that they just wandered around a car dealership for five minutes for a tiktok and then went home to laugh at the comment section paying their bills. Help her car shopping early on in life? She's four, leave her be. Um, what if she changes her mind on which car she wants to drive when she's older? Only in America. <laughs> Go set the queen. <laughs> I really don't know. I don't know if it's because there's more young kids on the internet than ever before, but boom, 9.5 million views. This account has over 2 million followers and all they post are these elaborate, obviously fake videos that occasionally go massively viral. I kind of have to respect the hustle, but they're not the only ones doing this. Does he realize that we can see literally who he's talking to? <gasps> I can't. Does that what say? Do I, what do I say? No, I'm so serious. What do I say? What did? Uh, no, I'm, oh my no, I'm actually gonna throw up. This is disgusting. No, turn off, turn off, turn off. Turn the light, turn the light. Hold on, law number eight. I meet Hannah. I would love to continue our conversation about cheating on my girlfriend, but I am currently being blinded by an unknown light source emanating from the vehicle. I must take a moment to investigate. So why were you just talking to blonde eight? I have no idea what you're talking about. On your phone, you were talking to someone that said blonde eight. Baby, you're seeing things. There's no blonde aid. Fake cheating videos are probably one of the most popular forms of rage bait on TikTok right now, where the anger of the viewer is redirected to this third-party character instead of the actual poster. But I feel like something a little more sinister is happening here, because the creator Kayla not only milked this fake cheating drama into a whole series of conveniently monetizable one-minute clips, she interspliced it with these real heartwarming posts of her and her family, which is extra yucky when you read the comments under the blonde number eight videos. The audacity of that man, the amount of restraint you showed, admirable. It's terrible this happened to you. I'm so glad someone recorded this because it's such a good way to teach, understand, and explain what gaslighting is. There are literally thousands of people offering their sincere condolences to her when she doesn't even have the decency to wear the same outfit between cuts. If you're gonna lie to me, at least learn the basics of continuity. Also, the official Major League Baseball account commented for some reason, God, I hate it when brands try to be people. You're not a witty and relatable TikTok user. You're a thousand unpaid interns in a trench coat. Kayla is a sympathy vampire whose cheating boyfriend has played many characters on her page, including the grumpy single roommate or the stranger hitting on her man at the bar because apparently this is her man? Or no, maybe maybe it's this one. Or never never mind. She's a, she's a lesbian. Am I being duped by a polycule right now? 
Is this even her real dad? Caleb pulled the exact same stunt last year when she dragged out a fake cruise cheating scandal that got her over 40 million views total. Stop, Wait. that's the girl. Oh my god! Oh, oh my, my god. god! This is not happening. Just put her hand on his arm. What are you looking at? What, what are they laughing? <gasps> We rockin' with God because he rockin' with us. <clears throat> Leviticus uh, chapter 19 verse 11. You shall not steal. You shall not deal falsely. You shall not lie to one another. Is God really rockin' with you, sinner? <laughs> There really seems to be no limit to the levels of obvious fakery that people will fall for on the internet. Don't believe me? Check this out. This is Chili's, right? No, this is Bucky's, which I think uh, you and the mascot have a lot in common. Yeah, before tax. Just, I'm so fascinated by your teeth. I'm not trying to be rude, but maybe I am a little bit. Okay, um, okay, thank you so much. You have a good day. We can all see the massive fake plastic teeth just sliding around this girl's mouth there's no there's no way that anyone would actually fall for this right right i am so sorry girl don't be insecure about yourself you are beautiful and you shouldn't let other people bring you down i'm so sorry you don't deserve to be treated this way her entire account is just wearing these fake teeth and she's gone viral multiple times. Look, I really didn't want to have to do this, but you guys have forced my hand. We're gonna have to sit down and watch the mandatory training video. No, nope, no, nope, you guys brought this on yourselves. Hi. If this video looks old as f that means corporate is still refusing to get off their asses and update it. Anyways, today I'm going to be teaching you the basics of internet safety using the stop, watch, and scroll method. When you see something online that makes you mad, stop. Remember that the person who posted the content is going to profit from any kind of engagement that you give them. Watch. Look closely for the following telltale signs that the video you're watching is fake. Someone being selectively blind to the camera like this adorably confused Italian husband. The lighting and angles are too good. People usually don't have enough time to set up a tripod during a crisis. Keep an eye out for awkward cuts and continuity breaks. Listen to the way people are speaking in the video. Are they underreacting? Are they overreacting? Are they speaking in a stilted tone, almost as if they are reading off of a script? How many times is he gonna back up that truck? Scroll. Whether a video is real or not, it's usually a good idea to just scroll anyways. Congratulations! You've just completed the official Funky Frog Bait Internet Safety Training Course. I'm not doing another take. I'm not doing another take. I have a government mandated break. Look, on average, you only have about 29,000 days to live, which sounds like a lot, but to put it in perspective, I've already used about 9,000 of mine. Why would you want to waste even a second of that time on some stupid video that's probably not even real? I, I know that sounds super hypocritical coming from someone like me whose whole job is talking about stupid stuff on the internet, but that's actually why I wanted to make this video. There have probably been a few instances where I've accidentally fallen for rage bait and included it in my content. Some of the TikToks that we just watched have been reacted to by creators with large followings. I, I think we need to start holding ourselves to a higher standard. Look, I don't have a really cool academic sounding conclusion for this video. The internet just kind of sucks right now and every platform seems to be incentivizing everyone to generate as much outrage as they can all the time. At this point you can basically assume that any post created by a Twitter user with a blue check mark has been scientifically optimized to make you as angry as possible so Elon Musk will throw them a few pennies. Reddit am I the asshole posts are regurgitated everywhere. You won't believe what my 38 male boyfriend did to me 18 female plus three other 
updates. I love it when my day is ruined by some stranger's creative writing assignment. But the unknown long-term effects of having constant negativity pumped into our eye sockets isn't even the actual scary part. If we don't get better at spotting fake inflammatory content online, it won't matter if it's real or not. Sometimes rage bait isn't just cutting off the bottoms of your shoes or pretending your boyfriend cheated on you. Sometimes it's little snippets of a podcast that subtly incite violence against women and minorities. Sometimes it's an orchestrated skit that confirms a harmful stereotype. It doesn't matter if the people who post the content actually believe it because a subsection of their viewers will and they'll act accordingly in the real world. If just one random TikTok user could have that much influence, imagine what a whole government could do. Just wait until AI, a completely unregulated weapon of mass misinformation that can conjure non-existent people, places, and scenarios out of thin air with a single text prompt typed out by literally anyone. <gasps>